When a tiger assassin bug and a silverback cross spider meet for dinner, only one will enjoy the victory feast. On any day in this Costa Rican jungle clearing, you'll find an unlikely hunter prowling the petals. With a cumbersome body and an alien head, the tiger assassin bug looks more like a clown than a killer. But there's nothing amusing about this predator. They'll eat pretty much anything that they can handle, any small arthropod. Bulbous compound eyes, attuned to color and movement, are constantly on the lookout for prey. When it strikes, thick front legs tipped with twin gripping claws pin the victim down. When an herbivorous Katie did gets a tap on the shoulder, it doesn't even have time to leap clear. Ending its days impaled on one of the bug world's strangest and most effective weapons. Part dagger, part hypodermic needle. When the proboscis punctures flesh, the horror's only just beginning. Once it's in, it starts injecting this nasty, nasty, paralyzing fluid that immediately makes its prey go immobile. Then it starts pouring digestive juices into the prey. Having its main strike weapon attached to its face means the tiger assassin bug must always get dangerously close to its victim. But the silverback cross spider prefers to remain out of the firing line. She sits there facing downward with the pairs of legs arranged like a cross. Now this is partially behavioral camouflage, but it also allows her to monitor each quadrant of the web simultaneously. The silverback cross spider also lets her web take the hard work out of hunting. Thick silk patterns called stabilimentum reflect ultraviolet light. Insects that collect flower pollen are drawn to any ultraviolet light source. So by putting the stabilimenta in the web, the spider is being ingenious. Not only is it attracting the pollen gatherers, but it's also attracting their insect predators. Any flying, jumping insect is at risk. Within seconds, this Katie did is trapped in a silken spin cycle. When she reaches the prey, she'll begin throwing silk around it as fast as she can, but using her long legs to keep it at a distance. Once it's safely hogtied, then she'll move in and deliver the venom. Her snack disposed of, the silverback cross spider settles back into her web. Her shape and sheen break up her silhouette, making her almost impossible for many animals to see. But if there's clear and present danger, she'll adopt a bizarre defensive strategy. The silverback will start bouncing the web back and forth, adding a little bit of energy every time until the entire thing becomes a blur. It makes it impossible for a predator to focus on the spider, let alone catch it. But the silverback isn't the only seasoned killer in this jungle clearing. Will its silky skills be enough to defeat a trained assassin? Spear versus silk in a fight to the death. Night in the leafy killing fields, a tiger assassin bug 
is poised to attack a silverback cross spider. But she's not intimidated. There will be war. The tiger assassin bug has a stabbing proboscis that injects toxic saliva. The silverback cross spider throws strong silk to immobilize its victim before finishing it off with venom. The assassin bug crash lands in the spider's lair. The owner rushes over. She hesitates, sensing danger. Then, in a blur of wrapping, she pulls out silk like bandages. The tiger is trapped. Or is she? The silverback tries to make sure. This spider species venom isn't particularly strong, but it's still adequate for the job. Now that she's delivered the first dose, she'll sit back, wait for it to take effect, and then move in for the kill and collect her bounty. Hoping her victim poses no further threat, the silverback cautiously returns. But the tiger has one final surprise. Its proboscis stabs through the silk, dripping with toxic saliva. The assassin bug would still love to get its proboscis and paralyze the spider that's attacking it. The tiger assassin bug tries to stab, but the silverback carefully keeps her foe at a safe distance until eventually the venom claims the feisty assassin's life. That battle may have been lost, but it made a valiant attempt to survive. The silverback cross spider will never know how close she came to sharing her victim's fate. When a domino beetle goes head to head with a crimson-legged assassin bug, it's caustic chemicals versus a surgical spear. So often in a tropical paradise, where there's beauty, there's danger. Predators stalk these petals. with a glossy black carapace and white spots. It's not hard to guess how the domino beetle got its name. This mean fighter comes from a family of belligerent beetles. They are good predators and they'll do what it takes to get food, whether it's stealing food, pillaging food, or killing food. The domino is the hyena of the bug world an unfussy carnivorous scavenger, happy to chow down on any creature, living or dead. Its prey are mashed by mandibles that are more powerful than they seem. Although his mandibles are relatively small, they're general purpose, and they pack a much stronger punch than they look like they do. Should an attacker persist, then it's all-out chemical warfare. When threatened, the domino sprays a noxious secretion. It's a combination of formic acid, which burns, and hydrocarbons that are really stinky, so he just smells really bad. The domino beetle is also fast and fidgety, unable to stand still. But that sometimes lands him in trouble when he finds himself near a potential foe. The crimson-legged assassin bug 
is a mortal enemy. With its chunky red legs, ungainly body, and elephantine proboscis, this bug is, let's face it, no oil painting. There are some researchers at Arizona State University who hold an annual event called the Ugly Bug Contest. One year, it was won by an assassin bug. This mean guy likes to win ugly, too. Massive forelegs like baseball bats, club prey into submission. And that huge proboscis injects toxic saliva that kills almost instantly. And at all times, those bulbous compound eyes are on the lookout. Though the domino beetle doesn't know it, it's wandered into danger. What happens when the hyena clashes with the hitman? Even though the assassin bug is the only dedicated predator in this chance meeting, the domino beetle still knows how to fight, and his mandibles are quite hardcore. So anything could happen. Next, a fight to the death in the rainforest flowers. Then, an all-terrain tank takes on a flesh-eating leopard. Amid the rainforest flowers, a battle is about to begin. A carnivorous domino beetle, scavenging for food, wanders into danger. A ravenous crimson-legged assassin bug on the hunt has an appetite for fresh beetle. The domino beetle has crushing mandibles, tough armor, and a noxious chemical spray. The assassin bug has club-like legs and a harpoon proboscis that injects lethal toxins. Which combatant will survive? The hyperactive domino beetle has stumbled into trouble. Its movement has attracted the assassin. At the last moment, the domino sidesteps a deadly blow. This domino beetle ought to avoid that assassin bug, but it's such a hyperactive animal, I don't think it's going to back off. The domino returns. This time, the assassin makes the first move and gets a nasty surprise. A burning, stinking chemical cloud sends it reeling. That's like being sprayed right in the face with a can of mace. It's gotta hurt. But it doesn't mean that he's given up on turning that beetle into lunch. The beetle's bought itself a little time. But the effects of the noxious spray soon wear off. The assassin bug launches a ferocious attack. This time, There'll be no chemical counter-strike. In the blink of an eye, the domino falls. Once this beetle has been injected with the highly toxic saliva of the assassin bug, it doesn't have a chance to respond. It's all over for this beetle. It hasn't been the easiest hit, but at last the victor can relax. The assassin's work is done, and the hyperactive domino has made its last move.
when a flag-tailed assassin bug goes into battle against a golden carpenter ant. It's precision versus power. In the bug world, there is no shortage of bizarre-looking creatures. With its large body, tiny head, and elephant-like proboscis, the flag-tailed assassin bug takes the prize for goofy looks. Like red flags, colorful tails protrude from the assassin bug's rear end. It could be to warn off a predator, attract a mate, we don't know. But what we do know is that the business side of things is on the other end. That extraordinary proboscis is usually tucked up under the head. But ignore it at your peril. It's rapier sharp. This bug is a methodical murderer. This is a very stealthy hunter. It stalks its prey very softly and smoothly, controlling every movement precisely. Bulging compound eyes register the slightest movement. Thick pipe cleaner legs bristle with sensory hairs. Twin claws are like grappling hooks for climbing. Antennae aren't just sensors. They're part of the arsenal. She would do well to prime her weapons. Nearby, a sworn enemy is on the prowl. Shining like a Christmas decoration, a female golden carpenter ant forages for food. They're called carpenter ants because they dig burrows into decaying trees or soft trees, and they're basically just using their jaws to gnaw their way in. Tough serrated mandibles are not just woodworking tools. They're vicious weapons. Enough for even a solitary ant to take on much larger spiders and scorpions. These guys can be really nasty. They go in, they bite another animal, and then they curl their abdomen around and spray formic acid into the wound. It's corrosive, it causes burns. Formic acid is something that everything wants to stay away from. But what happens when the golden pit bull tries to take down the bizarre assassin. Next, vicious jaws versus a deadly spear. Then, lethal killers let loose. Among the rainforest blossoms, a flag-tailed assassin bug is on a stakeout. Close by, a golden carpenter ant is out on the prowl. The flag-tailed assassin bug will use its proboscis to inject toxic saliva and flesh-melting digestive juices. The golden carpenter ant will use its toughened mandibles and burning acid who will emerge with their honor and life intact. Unintimidated, the ant moves first. But the assassin is ready. This time, the ant uses its speed advantage. But it's not quick enough. probing proboscis finds its mark. The assassin bug's venom attacks both the nervous and the muscular system, paralyzing the prey in just three to five seconds after being injected. The proboscis then switches from syringe to drinking straw.
the victim's liquefied innards are sucked up by this all-in-one instrument of death. It's been a red-letter day for the flagtail. No mess, no fuss. Everything you'd expect from an experienced assassin. A bug's life is mostly a short one. Just months, weeks, or days. And that's if they make it to old age. When a dreaded earwig and a bee-killer assassin bug go bump in the night, one life will not run its natural course. The earwig is like the garbage man of the bug world. Small and brown, it's like a cross between an ant and a cockroach. With the dexterity of a high wire performer, it relentlessly scours the rainforest for a meal, any meal. Earwigs are omnivores, and what this means is that they'll eat essentially anything that they can encounter. They'll eat small insects if they get the chance, they'll eat garbage, they'll eat plant material, they'll eat fruit, they'll eat anything that they can get that's edible. But what makes it really stand out from the grazing crowd are these. Forceps like pincers, called Circe, that can inflict nasty wounds. Those pinchers are really used in defense. So if they're threatened, they rear their tail up and the Circe up. It looks like a scorpion's tail. The pincers have even earned the earwig a fearsome reputation among humans. Part of the reason why everyone knows earwigs is because of the myth that earwigs with these nasty Circe must be dangerous, and that in fact they go into human ears and try to bore into a human brain. You gotta be kidding. There's no way that an earwig would wanna go into a small space in a warm human ear. But to other bugs, those pincers are formidable weapons. That's not all. Up front, the earwig comes with well-developed mandibles that can do serious damage. Even though the earwig's mandibles are relatively small, they're still able to effectively crunch through another insect's exoskeleton. Nearby is another rainforest feeder, less mythical but equally bizarre. The bee-killer assassin bug looks like a beetle crossed with a bird. This is one of the biggest species of assassin bugs, and it's a mean-looking beast. This vulture-like head, big beady eyes, and this weapon sticking right out the middle of them. The assassin bug's killing fields are rainforest flowers. To dispatch its prey, the assassin has a fearsome weapon. A long, needle-sharp rostrum that sucks up the liquefied flesh of its victim. The assassin bug completely and fatally lives up to its name. Once they've spotted a prey, the assassin bugs will often just freeze into position, and then the prey just becomes oblivious to their presence, 
and they'll creep very, very slowly up to it. And then when they strike, it's like a statue coming to life. That rostrum doesn't just stab. Like a hypodermic syringe, it delivers paralyzing saliva that disables its victim's muscles and nerves. The rostrum now becomes a straw as the assassin bug sits back and slurps up a cockroach milkshake in its floral cafe. But will the killing fields be quite so cozy when a seriously armed earwig comes by? Next, a stabbing assassin stalks its prey. In the floral reaches of the rainforest, where lives can be short and bizarre creatures ply their deadly trade, the fully armed earwig has ventured into assassin bug territory. Wary of that dangerous tail, the assassin bug chooses its attack position carefully. The earwig is preoccupied. Its best chance is to notice the assassin bug and move on as fast as it can. However, it looks like the earwig isn't paying attention. The assassin bug attacks, but misses. In the confusion, the earwig gets away. This time, the assassin bug makes no mistake. With one quick stab, the assassin bug's rostrum pierces the earwig's back. Venom floods in. The earwig's deadly pincers are useless. Assassin bugs have a nasty venom that has essentially paralyzed the earwig. The earwig can't do anything with its pinchers right now. It is completely incapable of fighting back. It might as well be inside of a straitjacket. The assassin bug has its piercing mouth parts in the earwig and is sucking up the innards of the earwig. It's done. The earwig's insides are dissolved and drained. The garbage man becomes garbage on the forest floor for others to finish off. One more creature that never makes it to a ripe old age. What happens when an ogre-faced spider sets a trap for an assassin bug? It's the skill of one forest ninja versus the stealth of another. In mythology, the ogre is a terrifying monster. Cruel, brutal, and hideous. 
But in the bug world, this monster is no myth. Ogre-faced spiders are about as neat as spiders come. Their middle posterior eyes, so their posterior median eyes, are huge. Most spiders have eight eyes, but poor vision. The ogre-faced spider has military-grade optics that turn night into day. They're outstanding at collecting light at night so that they see very, very well in darkness. Their vision at night is far better than cats and better than owls. That's extremely bad news for passing prey. But even more astonishing is the ogre face's weaponry. What these spiders do that is absolutely unique in the animal kingdom is they build a very, very specialized web. Hanging from a threadbare silk scaffold, the ogre-faced spider starts weaving a weapon. An expandable net that traps the unsuspecting in the blink of an eye. It flings it over its prey, like a gladiator, casting a deadly net. When they actually attack something, they're going down just incredibly fast and then releasing the web, and it contracts. It is fascinating to watch. The ultra-fine net is created with the skill of an expert weaver. They make it in their back legs. As you see them combing, they've got a comb on their fourth leg, and you see them combing out silk very fast. I often think of it as hair that has been teased up, and the silk looks something like that. Holding the tightly woven net in its four front legs, the ogre-faced spider silently sets up a vigil for whatever flies by or passes below. <laughs> Equally fascinating, every bit as silent and deadly is the assassin bug. Watching the assassin bug move is like watching a Shaolin Kung Fu master walking across rice paper, gentle, silent, careful. Not a single mark, not even the most minute noise. No wonder it's called the assassin bug. Its weapon of choice is part long sucking mouth, part syringe for injecting venom. The assassin bug stabs its prey using this long beak-like structure called a rostrum. But with the rostrum, it has additional microstructure. It's called stylids. And what they do is they open up small tears inside the prey, which facilitates the venom flowing in. The assassin bug feeds on any insect it can catch. It's even been known to skewer bats and humans. But it doesn't rely just on its rostrum. It has antennae as long as its body, which gather intel on the grasshopper it's silently stalking. It also plays smart. It imitates a wafting breeze. The assassin bug is being very clever here. As it gets quite close to the prey, it makes its footsteps bouncy and irregular, creating the kind of normal environmental background noise produced by a breeze. The assassin bug's rostrum spears the grasshopper's back. Deadly venom floods its body. The paralyzing action of the venom takes effect in three to five seconds. 
At this point in time, the limbs are unable to move. After about 15 seconds, it is completely paralyzed, even though it's still alive. Cry is sitting there immobilized. Other chemicals that the assassin bug has pumped in is now digesting it, even while it's alive. By the time the assassin bug is done, 40 to 60% will have been sucked out as a liquid lunch. As darkness descends, a deadly net and a venomous spear will soon become the weapons of choice in a forest as black and as ominous as the grave. Bug-world gladiators are about to do battle. One armed with a spear that pierces flesh with ease. And the other with a fast-release net that can finish a fight before it begins. As the spider hovers, the assassin bug closes in, <laughs> moving ever so slowly <laughs> from leaf to branch. The two deadly foes converge in the darkness. The assassin bug needs to get past the net to strike a blow. It tugs on the web. But a foot gets caught. In one swift movement, the ogre face flings down the net and scoops its victim into a treacherous tangle of silk. What it will do is it will grab it up wrap it up with more and more silk so there's no chance that the assassin bug is able to get its piercing mouth parts out. There's nothing that the assassin bug can do that's going to hurt the ogre face spider. The ogre wraps quickly while keeping her distance. The assassin bug stretches its legs to break free of the death shroud. It's too late. With the deadly rostrum safely encased in silk, the ogre face moves in for the kill. The would-be assassin takes a hit of paralyzing venom. Death is seconds away. But the ogre-faced spider ignores the formalities. It's already feeding on the body fluids of the vanquished. <laughs> 